In this video, we're going to talk about discontinuities. Up until this point, we've spent a lot of time looking at the definition of continuity, and this discussion is going to be a little subtle. We're going to talk about what happens when there is no continuity. So what do we mean by a discontinuity? So here's a million dollar question. Is the function 1 over x continuous? What's your answer? I would claim that this is not a fair question. When you ask the question, is the function 1 over x continuous, you're really missing some information. You got to know where you're claiming the function is continuous. So without that information, you have to interpret the question somehow. One natural interpretation of this question is, is the function 1 over x continuous on the real axis? Well, let's take a look at the graph of 1 over x. What happens near x equals 0? The limit from the left is negative infinity, and the limit from the right is infinity. And so, the limit as x approaches 0 certainly fails to exist. Not only that, f of 0 is not defined. So if we look at the definition of continuity at 0, well, neither the limit nor the value of the function is defined at 0, so certainly this can't be true. And of course, the function is not continuous at x equals 0. If it's not continuous there, then it's not continuous on all of r. So the answer to this question is obviously no. But there's another interpretation to this question. Maybe what the question really is asking, is the function 1 over x continuous on its domain? In this case, the domain of the function is all reals except 0. And the function is continuous on the open interval from 0 to infinity. It's continuous on the open interval from negative infinity to 0. Since these two intervals are open, we know that f must be continuous on the union of these two open intervals. And so, yes, the function is, in fact, continuous on its domain. So if you interpret the question one way, the answer is yes. But if you interpret the question the other way, the answer is no. So what's the moral of the story? Be explicit when you describe continuity. For example, you should say things like f is continuous at x equals 3, or f is continuous on the set of real numbers minus 0, or f is continuous on the interval from 0 to infinity, 0 included. The phrase f is continuous is ambiguous. To make sense of it requires either further elaboration or a clear context. If you encounter the phrase and must guess the meaning, a strong possibility is f is continuous on its domain. So now let's ask where is the natural log function continuous? We know that if x is greater than 0, then ln is continuous at x. Another way of saying this is ln is continuous on the open interval from 0 to infinity. And so, in fact, ln is continuous on its domain. Please note that ln of x is not defined when x is less than or equal to 0. What happens when we ask the question, is x continuous at such an argument? We would need to verify that the limit as w approaches x of ln of w is equal to ln of x. But if x is less than or equal to 0, we can't even evaluate the right-hand side of this. So certainly, the function's not going to be continuous at such an argument. Notice in particular that we can't include 0 in the interval of continuity, and it's certainly not the case that ln is continuous on r. Now let's just dwell on this a little bit longer. Suppose x is less than 0. Now this is the question you would ask if you were wondering if ln was continuous at such an argument. Well, of course ln of x is not defined, but you should notice something else. It's not possible to attempt to evaluate the limit as w approaches x from the left because there are no function values to sample. Similarly, it's not possible to attempt to evaluate the limit from the right. So the answer to this question is no, but somehow the question seems unfair to even ask. The limit never had a sporting chance of existing because you couldn't even sample values near the argument. So now let's turn to the notion of discontinuity. We want to try to figure out what it means to be discontinuous. How should we define the notion of a discontinuity? The simplest and most obvious way is to declare that if f is not continuous at the argument a, then f has a discontinuity at that argument. But this is perhaps not a wise definition. And we're going to go right back to the example of ln of x. The logarithm is not continuous 
at any of the arguments less than or equal to zero. But do we really want to declare all of these arguments to be discontinuities of the logarithm function? Because in a strange way, there's a continuous nothingness of discontinuity. After all, using everyday language, a discontinuity means a disruption. But since there's no graph out here to begin with, it seems strange to talk about discontinuities of the graph. So perhaps it's not enough just to say that if the definition of continuity fails, we're talking about a discontinuity. We should at least be able to attempt to evaluate this limit on the left side. This may not be a standard definition, but we're going to declare that f has a discontinuity at the argument a if and only if the domain of f includes open intervals to the left and the right of the argument so that we can at least sample function values nearby in order to give the limit a sporting chance of existing. And then, of course, we will say that f must not be continuous at that argument. In other words, the limiting value fails to agree with the value of the function at a. So there are three possibilities. The limit fails to exist, the function value fails to exist, or the two exist, but they just don't agree. By the way, you might be looking at that first condition and asking yourself, doesn't that contradict what was just said on the previous slide? The answer is no. All the previous slide declared was that you should at least be able to sample nearby function values near A. The limit might or might not exist, but at least you can sample values of the function to decide one case or the other. So let's talk about the types of discontinuities. Discontinuities are often categorized as removable discontinuities, jump discontinuities, infinite discontinuities, and even taking into account all these three possibilities, there are still other types of discontinuities. Let's look at the case of a removable discontinuity first. So in this case, the limit as x approaches a exists. The function value at a is either undefined or the value is defined but it just doesn't agree with the limiting value of the function. So why is this called removable? You have the option of defining a new function, we'll call it capital F, and we'll define it by setting it equal to the value of the old function, as long as you haven't chosen the argument A, and then when you do choose the argument A, you'll redefine the value of the function to be the limiting value of the old function as you approach A, and by doing so, you've now created a function that's identical to the original function except at the argument a, but now the function is actually continuous at a. In other words, we've removed the discontinuity by making this simple redefinition. Let's look at a jump discontinuity. Now in this case, the limiting value as you approach the argument from the left side exists, and the limiting value as you approach the argument from the right side exists, but the two do not match each other. By the way, the function value at a may or may not be defined, but it really doesn't matter because the limiting value of the function clearly fails to exist. Now, is a jump discontinuity removable? Well, since the limiting value of the function fails to exist, it really doesn't matter what the value of the function is. You could define it anywhere you like, but you're still not going to have the limiting value match up with the function value. So the function value is irrelevant, and the discontinuity is not removable. However, the discontinuity is half removable from either the left or the right. So what do we mean by this? You could try to play the same game we just did with a removable discontinuity. We'll define a new function f, identical to the old function away from the argument a, and then, since the limiting value as you approach a from the left exists, we'll redefine this new function to have that value at the argument a. Now we've created a function that's continuous from the left at the argument a. But we could play the same game the other direction. We could define a new function g, identical to the old function, away from the argument a, and this time we'll redefine the function value at a to be the limiting value from the right, thereby obtaining a function that's continuous from the right. So one way to think about a jump discontinuity is it's removable from one side and removable from the other, but not removable. An infinite discontinuity is pretty much what it sounds like. 
So in this case, the limiting value from one side is positive or negative infinity, and the limiting value from the other side is positive or negative infinity. And once again, we won't care what the actual definition of the function value is at a. So there are a lot of classic examples of this kind of behavior. 1 over x squared has an infinite discontinuity at the origin, and tangent x has an infinite discontinuity at the argument pi over 2. Now, even with all those types of discontinuities, there's still other types of discontinuities that don't fall into these categories. Here's a classic, sine 1 over x. If you look at a graph of sine 1 over x, you'll notice that as x approaches 0, the function oscillates more and more violently. The limit doesn't exist, and this function is not continuous at 0. Is it removable? Not a chance. The limiting value just doesn't exist. Is there a jump discontinuity? Well, the one-sided limits don't exist either. Is it infinite? Of course not. The function value is always bounded between negative 1 and 1, so the limiting values are neither positive infinity nor negative infinity. So we would have to say this discontinuity is none of the above. It's a different kind of discontinuity. Here's another possibility. In this example, we see that the limiting value as you approach the argument a from the left exists, and the limiting value as you approach a from the right is infinity. So what's going on here? There's clearly a discontinuity, but the nature of the discontinuity depends on which side you're coming from. It's clearly removable from the left, but it's also infinite from the right. So maybe the best way to describe this discontinuity is a hybrid discontinuity. So there you go. This has been a brief discussion of the idea of discontinuity. Discontinuities can be rather subtle, but hopefully this discussion was useful to you, and at the very least, you come away with a better understanding of what the definition of continuity in an argument is really all about, and a better appreciation for why continuous functions are so nice.